Welcome to Missing Persons Case Files, a place where the gone are not the forgotten. What's happening in the forests of North America? How are so many people disappearing only to have their remains found much later, or in many cases, not at all? Are there predators to blame? Giant hair-covered beasts? Or even more terrifying, us as humans? Maybe it's both. Maybe it's neither. These are just a few of the questions we'll look to uncover here on The Missing Persons Case Files. Stanley V. Hill Borales Peak Lookout, Santa Fe National Forest, New Mexico. November 7th, 2017. On November 7th, 2017, Stanley V. Hill was on a hunting trip with his father, Stanley Sr., as well as two friends. Stanley was 50 years old at the time of his disappearance. The men were driving along Forest Road 83 near Barilla's Peak Lookout. The group had been drinking throughout the day. About 4 o'clock p.m., Stanley spotted a deer and jumped out of the truck to begin chasing it leaving behind his rifle and his phone. He was not dressed for the bad weather and had no food or water. He did, however, have a 9mm with him. Stanley Sr. yelled for his son to stop, but he did not. According to one of the men, Stanley would whistle back when his name was called. Eventually, the other men began firing their guns in the air, wanting to lead him back. One man said he heard Stanley fire shots back in response. Stanley Sr., however, had a bit of a different story. He said he heard gunshots coming from the direction his son ran in, so they fired a couple shots in response and began calling Stanley's name. The men spent some time searching, but were only able to find some boot prints heading south. They ended up calling authorities around 8 o'clock p.m. By the time help arrived, the weather had taken a turn for the worse, with significant fog and snow. On November 8th, a woman living in San Juan heard knocking on her door between 9 and 11 p.m. When she opened the door, there was a man with a pistol on his hip in a holster. She asked the man what he wanted. He told her his truck was stuck in the mountains and there were men chasing him. The lady said she was confused and scared due to, the, due to how late it was and how the man was acting. She said he kept reaching in the area of the pistol. She had heard about the missing person in the area but believed it to be a young boy. The man asked to use her phone. She told him no, it was dead then slammed the door shut. She watched through a window as the man walked away into the night. It was the next day when she contacted the search and rescue team and she was shown a picture of Stanley. She then confirmed that he was the man that knocked on her door the night before. Scent dogs were brought to the lady's house and were able to pick up on Stanley's scent for a while before losing it. On November 10th, Stanley's sister, Darcy, along with Stanley Sr., were interviewed. Darcy found it very odd that her brother would be missing this long, considering how familiar with the area he is. She believed that someone had harmed her brother. The two also spoke of a game trail camera in the woods that had captured a picture of a man wearing a dark-colored hoodie, similar to to what Stanley was wearing. The photo was captured on November 8th around 9.30 p.m. at the Diamond Ranch. On November 12th, Darcy V. Hill contacted the authorities stating she had found a 223 ammo shell casing at a gas station along with surveillance video showing a man who appeared to be hiding when a truck pulls up with three people inside, they get out of the truck and approach the man before running back to the truck and leaving. Darcy believed 
that her brother had been shot. Canines were taken to the gas station. They alerted right away on the scent of Stanley V. Hill. This gave authorities good reason to believe that Stanley was running from a group of men. They were able to find tracks indicating that Stanley was able to go about a mile or so from the station. It would be almost two months before any new information would arise regarding this case. When on January 4th of 2018, Darcy calls 911 stating she had received a text message saying her brother Stanley was being beaten at the Picos River Station and that shots had been fired. It is not confirmed in the report who sent the text. When officers arrived, however, there was no crime taking place. On April 7, 2018, Stanley's body was found in the Picos River by an off-duty officer who was fishing by the village of San Jose. According to Darcy, police told her that her brother had drowned, but showed head trauma and had broken ribs. All right, guys, this one's a little bit different than the last ones that uh, Tiffany and I have been covering. Uh, Different in the way that it's my opinion that this is pretty cut and dry. I mean, I, I don't think anyone's been caught or been punished for what happened, but I think it's pretty cut and dry that man was inebriated. He was being silly. He saw a deer. He jumps out for laughs, starts chasing the deer, and it just goes too far. He he gets gone too far and realizes, oh, crap, I'm in trouble. Something happens. He thought he comes across a grow, maybe. I, I don't know. But he runs into some guys in the woods, gets into an altercation, and has to flee. And the next day, he's found at the lady's house knocking on the door. Understandably, she's a woman. I, I didn't see if she was alone or if she had kids with her or, or what. But understandably, the, the woman was hesitant to let the man in and to let him use the phone. If it was my wife, my sister, my mom, I would want them to react the same way. He didn't tell her that he was the missing person. That would have gone a long way, you would think. You you would think she would then have gotten him some help. But again, she thought that a little boy was missing. But things just didn't happen that way. She confirmed that it was him. Dogs come out, get his scent. And then you got the whole thing at the gas station. His sister gets involved, and it's just a big mess. And there was surveillance video of these guys coming after him. I mean, it's cut and dry. Some people hurt this man. That's all there is to it. Bigfoot did not get this man. He was not abducted by aliens. He wasn't picked up by something, didn't step into a portal. Nothing like that happened. This was done by man. Problem I have with this case, not necessarily in the case, but in how the case was reported. Some of you have heard of this. Probably a lot of you have heard this case because it was featured in one of David Pilatus' missing 411 movies, The Hunted, or one of those movies where he talks about hunters that, that went missing. But conveniently, the story stops after, I, while David Pilatus in The Missing 411 are covering it. Now, I haven't seen this this episode. I, I haven't watched all of them. I haven't seen this one, but I was told, and in the research that I've done, I saw where they stopped talking about it after he went missing in the woods. He did not cover any of him going to the woman's house, being, fiend, being seen on surveillance camera, the reports of him being beaten or shot, and then the the uh, canines picking up on his scent in multiple places outside of the woods. He just conveniently left that out. Those seem like pretty important parts to add to this story. Unless you're selling a certain narrative. And I just think that's what's going on with a lot of these cases that, that Mr. Pilatus has covered. This has nothing to do with cryptids. Absolutely nothing. It's a tragic story. This man was killed by people, and then his body was dumped in a river. 
to not? I mean, what a disjustice is that? What kind of a disjustice is that to this man's family that you don't accurately report what happened? You, you're making all this money off of these movies that you're putting out, selling to people that Bigfoot is taking these people. And, and granted, he's never come out and, and, and blamed a Bigfoot. I've never heard him do that. But he is speaking at the Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Conference next week. And he's been he's gotten into arguments with many people on many conference on many stages of many conferences, Dr. Jeff Meldrum being one of them. I mean, the man is saying Bigfoot is taking these people without physically saying Bigfoot is taking these people. I just think it's wrong. It's wrong. You should not do shame on you. Mr. Pilatus it is all I have to say. I don't know if he'll ever hear this, if it'll get to him or not. And, and I mean, I really don't care, but I'm not saying anything that's not factual. This is just my opinion. I don't like that this case was covered like that. And I would not be shocked if there's others. I, I've got a pretty loyal fan base. I know you guys will reach out and let me know if they're or more like this but we got to stop as my great friend dr john baron chalk says pimping out bigfoot bigfoot had nothing to do with this case why are you including it in a documentary that you were featuring around strange disappearances in the woods yes it was a strange disappearance in the woods but there's more than enough evidence to suggest what happened to this man. His body was found. I don't know. This one just really rubbed me the wrong way. I've been looking uh, for a short one to cover for a little while. I got several other that others that I'm going to be releasing pretty soon. This one just rubbed me the wrong way. You guys let me know what you think about it. Again, paranormal, cryptid, nothing to do with this case it, it's a tragic case and my heart goes out to, to his family his friends his loved ones and everyone that was involved in in that search it sounds like law enforcement did their job a lot of the cases that we cover sometimes uh, the ball might have been dropped here and there by law enforcement but it sounds like in this case they did a really really good job so kudos to them y'all y'all know i have nothing but respect for law enforcement there are several police officers that I now consider friends because of this show. And I have nothing but the utmost respect for all of them. I mean, Brian is a former police officer and nothing but respect for him. But, uh, yeah, kudos to you guys for doing a, a great job. Guys, let me know what you think. Reach out to me, Wayne at paranormal world productions.com. Till we talk to y'all again. Y'all take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Bye.